Scientists may never know for sure if NASA's Curiosity rover detected signs of life on Mars two years ago, but now is the right time for them to gather some promising clues. Last December, the Curiosity team announced that methane concentrations in the air around the rover, which has been exploring Mars' 96-mile-wide, 154-kilometers, Gale crater since August 2012, jumped by a factor of 10 for about two months from late 2013 through early 2014. Here on Earth, the vast majority of atmospheric methane has a biological origin. So news of Curiosity's discovery made a big splash among both scientists and the general public. While the Curiosity rover is not searching specifically for life on Mars, NASA's agenda for the Red Planet includes this goal. Part of the reason why is the presence of excess amounts of methane in Mars's atmosphere. We caught up with John Grotzinger, the mission scientist for the Mars Science Laboratory, to find out why. A lot of people ask about how and if we can measure uh, methane in the atmosphere of Mars with Curiosity. We do have an instrument, it's the SAM instrument. We can take a whiff of the air. And, and, and sort of smell it to see if there's methane in there. We have an instrument that can detect methane. And the reason why that would be interesting to do is because methane is what's called a reduced gas. And we think that the atmosphere is oxidizing, and so it shouldn't exist. So we're actually not expecting to see some. On the other hand, other groups of scientists have observed possible methane in the atmosphere. So that would mean that if we actually measure it, that it must be produced somewhere, right now, somewhere on Mars. This can't be left over from, you know, millions of years ago, because it would all be oxidized. The methane would be converted into carbon dioxide. And so what happens out of that is that you basically have the ability to test methane in the atmosphere and then ask, is this an inorganic process, which is possible, or is it a biological process? We don't have the ability to decide between those two options, but we can simply determine if it's there, and then a later mission can come back and do it in more detail. Curiosity is an astrobiology mission, but we're not looking for signs of life. And by that, what I mean is we're not looking for evidence of microorganisms that might be alive on the surface of Mars today, and we're also not looking for their fossil remains in rocks that might be billions of years old. And the reason why is because technologically to go to that level is a lot more complicated. And so what we can do in the meantime is hit an intermediate step between spirit and opportunity that looked for signs of water and a life detection mission at some point in the future that looks for signs of life. And we in the middle look for what we call habitable environments. And that's sort of like asking, you know, are the ingredients of life there? Can we measure chemical elements that are important for life, like ca carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen, things like that. And in addition, we can also look for organic compounds that may be left over from when life was present a long time ago, and all the cellular matter is gone, but there might be small you know, chains of organic molecules that are left to, to look at. And, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be our goal in the mission. And we, and we can't really do life detection for modern organisms because what you'd have to do is be able to measure uh, the chemical reactions and the chemical byproducts of an organism doing what's called metabolism, which for a microorganism is basically being alive. We wouldn't be able to measure those with our spacecraft. In the 1970s, the Viking landers searched for life on Mars, but the results of these simple tests were inconclusive and are still debated today. A Viking, as an earlier mission, uh, collected data, and some of the data has become controversial. And part of the reason why is that the community of scientists are just starved for new data. I mean, that's the way the business goes. And, and you want to do a new experiment, you build a new instrument, you discover a new way to do observation, you collect the data. So, you know, those of us that are working on, on Curiosity are really excited about the possibility that we'll be able to collect some data that may actually bear on those Viking results 30 or 40 years ago. In any event, the search for life will continue with new and ever more ambitious missions.
If, if budget weren't an issue, uh, I, I do believe that, that more sample return would, would be a really good thing to do. And if you're going to do it, and it takes a long time, you want to make sure you're in the right place. So it would be okay to have a generation of, of rovers you know, like uh, Curiosity, or maybe others like, like uh, Spirit and Opportunity, a little bit smaller in scale, send those things around, search the far corners of the globe, you know, see what's out there, and get really familiar with it, and then do sample return. But for now, Curiosity has much work ahead of it, which will lead the way to a new and ever more exciting understanding of Mars. This is Rod Pyle for Space.com. Space.com. But, red planet microbes aren't the only possible explanation. Geological processes can produce methane as well. Indeed, a new study lays out three scenarios that could explain the mysterious spike, and only one of them invokes the presence of Mars life. One hypothesis that doesn't involve life holds that methane commonly gloms onto Martian soil particles in dry conditions and then is released into the air when salts known as perchlorates to liquids become liquid after absorbing atmospheric water, said lead study author Ren Yuhu who's based at the California Institute of Technology and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, both of which are located in Pasadena. The other non-life idea posits that Curiosity encountered a random, localized outburst of methane that had previously been locked in a subsurface aquifer, who said. All of the envisioned possibilities, perchlorate deliquescence, hypothesis 1, life, hypothesis 2, and random outburst, hypothesis 3, can be tested, to some extent, using future curiosity observations, who told Space.com Wednesday, December 16, here at the annual full meeting of the American Geophysical Union, AGU, where he presented the research. For example, hypotheses 1 and 2 predict that methane spikes should occur at about the same time each Martian year, since both explanations tie the gas surges to the deliquescence cycle. In the case of life, previously dormant organisms would be activated by the presence of briny liquid water, who said, the scenario involved in hypothesis 3 should not be as strongly seasonal. Curiosity observed the methane spike during the southern Martian autumn and early winter, and it's that season again in Gale Crater. The cold weather association may seem counterintuitive, but deliquescence on Mars is driven not by high temperatures but rather by high relative humidity and low saturation pressure, who explained. Hypotheses 1 and 2 even make slightly different predictions about the timing of methane release. Hypothesis 2 predicts a spike a little bit later in the winter, who said. The hypothesis testing is, in fact, underway, and there's already some bad news. For people who favor the Mars microbes explanation, at least, Curiosity has seen no signs yet of another methane surge despite regular and repeated sampling efforts, said JPL's Chris Webster, the lead author of the December 2014 study announcing the 2013-2014 spike. The most recent analyzed measurements were taken two weeks ago. The rough equivalent, season-wise, of the halfway point of the 2013-2014 spike, said Webster, who presented these new results Thursday afternoon, December 17, here at AGU. I'd say it's unlikely to come back, Webster told Space.com. Follow my call on Twitter at Michael Wall and Google+. Follow us at Space.com, Facebook or Google+. Originally published on space.com. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. Mars is alive. Okay, stand by 13, we're looking at it.